Hello, hello. I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Hello, hello. Oh yes, good to be back. I suppose I wasn't gone for any longer than usual, considering that I haven't, you know, been delayed or, yeah, had to cancel any streams this week. I'm about 30 minutes late, and I wish there was something I could say to, uh... I wish there was something I could say about that, but I was simply late. I simply got distracted. Anyway, so, let's see. Arknights. But yeah, I have a little bit to talk about. I've been thinking about strategy, but not combat strategy. But we'll get back, we'll get into that in a second here. But yes, before that though, it is time for business. So, tonight, Arknights, yes, as it turns out, I'm going to be out of town this weekend. This information was provided to me relatively recently. I've in theory known about it for a while, but I was, it was presented to me in such a way previously that I wasn't aware that it was an expectation of me. I had thought that someone was simply saying that they were going out of town, but, uh, no, I am also, uh, going to be going. But yes, I suppose I do have, you know, volition in this, but <laughs> I have chosen to go out of town. I have been invited to go out of town, more specifically. So yes, so this will be happening over the weekend, if I didn't already say that. And yeah, so yeah, no streams on Saturday or Sunday. I suppose we don't usually stream on Sunday, but uh, yes. There will be no streams on either of those days. I do expect to be back on Sunday, and so we should be seeing streams starting again at the usual time next week. I suppose that would be quite the quite uh, the departure, <laughs> quite the departure if it wasn't so, considering that I usually don't stream on Monday either. But yes. So, anyway, all of this is to say. Oh, pardon. Yes, all of this is to say that, yeah, tonight, streaming, probably going to be streaming on Thursday and Friday as well, but we will see. So, yes. So, yes, tonight's stream, well, I keep wanting to say it as though I need to tell you what time the stream is going to start, but, you know, it has started, so... But yes, tomorrow's stream and Friday's stream should probably start somewhere around 9 p.m. Central Time, as per this one. But yes, so again, not everything is guaranteed. We, I'm still trying to work out a time with Sheps to see if we can do the collab. But yes, the yeah, we will we will see about that. I don't know precisely if we'll be able to do that on Friday, and I don't know if Thursday will work either, and those are all the times that we've got currently available. So, anyway, with all that being said, there are some things that I've been working out, some things that I've sort of been thinking about, like I said, yeah, my plans going forward, my strategy for continuing Arc Nights, but yes, so that will... Further thinking on that will impact how I go about, uh, yeah, will impact how I go about doing things in the future. Yes, possibly in the immediate future. So that's why I'm not saying what we're going to be playing, basically. It might be Arknights, it might be something else. I suppose given that we've started Mika and the Witch's Mountain, I don't want to immediately set it on the back burner. We've already got three games on the back burner, four, maybe? Getting pretty crowded back there. Anyway, let's go into the game room and talk about video games. So, Arknights. So yeah, so I've, like I said, I've been thinking a little bit about my strategy for Arknights. I actually, I was uh, talking with some friends of mine the other day about my Arknights series, and the, the question came up of how, uh, how far back the first episode or the first uh the first arc night stream was and as it turns out it was february of uh 2023 so we've been playing this game for about a year and a half now and that's quite a while 
But yes. So, having come to this realization, I've done some more thinking, and I've realized that, yeah, we've not made a whole lot of progress in a year and a half. And to be fair, a lot of that came from my scheduling being pretty inconsistent for a good while there. For a lot of instances of not making a whole lot of progress, of streaming for very short periods of time, things like that. And, you know, probably we could be a lot further along, but I don't want to necessarily assume everything will go perfectly. Anyway, all of this is to say, I did some estimations, and so, with, with a not terribly generous estimate, I was based on how much content there is left in the game, we could be looking at another five and a half years. Probably less than that. I don't remember, I don't remember what exactly I came up with as the more, maybe not more reasonable, but more generous estimate. But yeah. Again, this is assuming roughly two hours per stream, roughly one stream a week, all that. But yes, what was the second number I came up with? Oops, this is not the right spreadsheet. This is the right spreadsheet. Don't worry about the fact that you can't see it. But yes, so the current estimate is, again, slightly more slightly more generous, um, or I guess less, yeah, it's less so generous and more so that my initial estimate was, yeah, assuming that I played roughly two hours worth of gameplay, and thus I would need to uh, maintain a, a rate of two hours of gameplay per stream, when this is simply not the case, because there's a lot of time like this when I'm talking on streams and so on and so forth, and most of the VODs aren't even two hours long. A good chunk of them aren't even an hour long. So yes, if we do consistently do two-hour streams and all of that, it could be closer to... Whoops. Eh, it's still about five years. Anyway, all of this is to be said. All of this is to say. I feel like I'm saying that a lot tonight. Anyway, so. Long time. It will take a long time, basically. And as much as I do like this game, as much as I do, as much as I would be willing to play it for another five years and a half, perhaps more, as more content is added, uh, I don't know that I necessarily want to be doing that as like my whole identity as a person who make, who does streams necessarily. I would like to take a little bit of a break from it every now and then. I would like to uh, have other things to do, like I've said before. We have several games on the back burner, some of which were set aside specifically to focus on Arknights. Sit. <clears throat> so yes. So, I haven't worked anything out in particular yet. We're still sort of in the planning phases, but currently I'm thinking about shifting my focus a little bit. But yes. Ideally, I set out with the goal of completing all of the story content in Arknights. And though that is still a desire of mine, I do... I'm going to be willing to compromise with myself on that, basically. Because it will take a long time. And like I said, I don't want to necessarily be a person who only plays Arknights. I have a lot of other games that I wanted to play and a lot of games that I'm kind of wanting to play in the future. Another thing that spurred this line of thinking was having seen the Nintendo Direct recently. The new Atelier and the new Rune Factory look very cool to me. I really want to play some Atelier games. Anyway. CS. So yes. Where was I? Right. CS. So, yes. so there are games that I have wanted to play. There are games that I want to play in the future. And, you know, I can play games on my own time, of course, but I want to play them here as well. So, my plan is... Yeah, there are multiple facets to it. So, for one thing, I want to see about streaming a little bit later. Yeah, historically I have streamed until... Yeah, I, historically I have streamed until 10.30, roughly, and usually cut myself off pretty hard at that time. 
I might extend that to 11, perhaps even 11.30, though that's kind of a stretch. But yeah, I'm going to try to push to start stream a little bit earlier and to stream a little bit later to have more time in the streams for the game. Ideally, I should probably be cutting out some of uh, some of this rambling, or at the very least getting getting more proficient at talking while playing so that I can ramble while playing. But yes, um, where was I? Right, okay. So yes, so more time per stream, ideally. Another thing is I want to see about doing more streams per week. Because if we can bump it up from, you know, two hours per week, you know, roughly, two hours per stream, yeah, I don't know. Again, it's hard to translate it into exactly, like, actual game hours, but yeah, if we assume a certain amount of two-hour streams are what I need to get through the game, then yeah, doing two two-hour streams a week will have the time thus making it closer to two and a half years. But yes. Still a long time. A big commitment to make, but... Sick. But yes, anyway. So, more time per stream, more streams per week, ideally, which is part of why I was reluctant to commit to saying I was going to play anything in particular this week. Because, again... The possibility could be that I will play Arknights again tomorrow or Thursday. Probably not all three days. Tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow or Friday, rather. Almost certainly won't play Arknights all three days. I will, I will do something else. Mika and the Witch's Mountain, most likely. And again, I might not play Arknights all three days anyway, depending on collab and all that. So yes, anyway. So, where possible, more Arknights streams per week. Where possible, more stream per stream. And also, I am shifting my focus a little bit to having a stronger focus on getting through the main story. But yeah, specifically, I'm thinking of currently, and I'm still kicking around ideas. I only just came up with this, this strategy earlier today. But yeah, currently I am thinking about focusing on the main story and focusing on intermezzi, which are a type of story event. But yes, they're a little bit more involved than these side stories that we've been doing, such as uh, Gabriel the Great Chief Returns, and back when we did, uh, what was that, A Flurry to the Flame? I can't remember if it's A Flurry to the Flame or Leaves Chasing Fire. One of those is the English title. I think one of them was one of them was going to be the English title, and then they changed it, um, or something like that. Anyway, the Monster Hunter event. So yes. So as I understand it, Intermezzi tend to be a little bit more involved and a little bit more. I don't know. I want to say important to the lore, but I don't know that for sure. You know, the Ark Knight's story is a big picture, but a big picture is made up of small pictures. So all of the all of the bits of lore and dialogue and all that are important to building it up. And that's why I'm wanting to do all of them. But again, I don't necessarily want to make this my entire brand for half a decade. It'd be like it'd be almost three or yeah, almost seven years. <laughs> yeah, the better very much the better part of a decade I would be playing this game. And again, if we do it at the rate that I've been doing it, it'll be playing pretty much nothing but this game. And I do like this game. <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to reiterate that so much. But yeah, I guess, you know. I see a lot of people on the internet saying, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I feel the need to reiterate that so much. Anyway. So, all of this is to say, once again, that the main focus will be on the main stories and on the intermezzi. I do plan to do side stories, as I think would be helpful in giving more context to some of those events. Some of the intermezzi and some of the main story chapters 
reference things from other chapters or from side stories and whatnot, vignette events, those being the story-only events, such as uh, Stories of Afternoon. But yeah, some of those we may also do. I'm currently planning on potentially doing those a little bit as like side projects. So something like Mika and the Witch's Mountain, where I'll be playing, you know, through Arc Knights, the main story or an intermezzi or whatnot. But yeah, playing through the main focused part of the game, then maybe doing a side story or a vignette on the side. Yeah, and having that be something that I would only do once per week if I'm otherwise streaming Arc Knights multiple times per week, so on and so forth. But yes. So, given the, yeah, my estimates, if I were to cut down to just the parts of the story already discussed, or, yeah, just the, yeah, based on estimates of my current projections of all of the story chapters that exist, and all of the intermezzi that exist, and all of the side stories that I believe have, uh, could be useful for providing additional context to those intermezzi and to those story chapters. We're currently looking at an estimated time of completion of about, uh, about 32 weeks, so a little under a year. A significant amount under a year, I suppose, but... So, all of this is to say that it won't be so, so long. And again, after we've done that, we'll, we will sort of have a bit of a Achilles and the Tortoise paradox situation where by the time I'm done with that, they'll almost certainly have come out with more intermezzi and more story chapters. So we'll have a new target to shoot for, but at least we won't have quite so much on our plate. And again, I intend to do sort of side stories and side modes as well. I'm also considering things like contingency contract and uh, trials for navigator in particular because, uh, or no, uh, it was Trials for Navigator and Integrated Strategies, I believe? Anyway, there are some side games in Arc Knights that have stories attached to them, and some side modes that don't. But yes, I haven't talked about them a whole lot because I haven't thought about them a whole lot, and I haven't done them pretty much at all. I did a few, a few tries at a contingency contract mission a long, long time ago, and I didn't do great at it. That was well before I started streaming, so it was well before I sort of started expanding my mind when it comes to strategy. So, anyway, spending a lot of time here to say that I intend to play the game more and spend less time not playing the game. So maybe I should play the game, huh? Anyway, so, let's wrap up. The main focus will be the main theme and intermezzi interspersed with side stories and whatever else I believe will be useful for providing additional context. Once we have achieved a pretty firm grasp of the main story, perhaps even completed it along with the intermezzi selected, yes, then I will start to consider more seriously doing other side content, though side content in Arc Knights will probably also be side content for the stream, which is to say it is something that I will be doing sort of in, on the side, in between other major projects. This will probably make Arc Knights take, you know, longer to complete. It will stretch the experience out over a longer period of time. But it will also mean that it won't, uh, it won't be sort of the all-consuming, all-consuming, uh, it won't be the entirety of my channel. Because again, I want to play other games. And you know, I don't need to apologize for that, I guess. Maybe that's why I felt the need to sort of reiterate that I do still like this game. Maybe I feel on some level worried that people think that I don't like it or something. But, you know. I don't need to apologize or justify the fact that I want to play other games, because it's my channel. And I could do whatever I wish. And what I wish to do is play Arc Knights. So let's play Arc Knights. <laughs> but yes. You have to be a little bit careful with the spreadsheets because one of the ones that I opened was uh, not uh, to be seen. Anyway, so. 
This mission, huh? <laughs> so yes, it has been the topic of much thought for me for these past few days. And I'm a little bit... Yeah, I, I'm a little bit... Eh. I'm a little bit willing to sort of uh, compromise on this as well. Not as though we have compromised already on several missions, but... Again, I was kind of wanting to do this one, get a perfect clear on this one, just for the sake sake of it, basically. And while I do think it's possible, in theory, with the setup we have, I don't think it's plausible. At the very least, it would take... Let me put it another way. It would take a lot more time than I care to invest. Yeah, I would like to... Yeah. It would take more time than I care to invest right now. I want to get through this relatively quickly, not as though I'm not enjoying it again, but I want to get through it relatively quickly so we can get back to other business for Arknights. But yes. So, what happens, happens, and as long as we clear the mission, it's fine, basically. But yes. I'm also thinking that I'm probably... I've said this a lot, I've considered it a lot, but the more time goes on, the more I think that probably it would be best if I leveled up a few units a little bit more. But yeah, again, there's a part of me that rails against this because I think, but what will happen if I get all of my units up too high of a level and I don't uh, have a challenge anymore? There's plenty of challenging content in the game, and there's plenty of challenging ways to play it other than just having all of your units be basically the lowest level that they can possibly be before the math starts to fall apart. But yes. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. And one thing, I did want to look at the big ugly thing real quick. Hmm. I was thinking... Yeah, okay. I was thinking that it said somewhere on here whether the whether a particular enemy was vulnerable to certain status effects. Um, but it doesn't say anything like that. More specifically, I was kind of wondering if the big ugly thing could be stunned. And it doesn't say that it does, but it also doesn't say that it doesn't. But yes, in the time since the last the last stream. We've also, or I've also, you weren't there, I've also looked up a little bit of information about the big ugly thing and about the uh, Tikal fanatics. And one thing that I learned about the fanatics is that their defense decrease actually uh, is permanent. Like every time that they strike, your defense is reduced and it doesn't go away. I'd assume that it was just a debuff that stacked up to a certain amount and probably just went away over time. But, uh, no. If you have a fanatic attacking one of your units for long enough, they will have no defense whatsoever. So that's not so great. But yes, with that in mind, I am thinking a little bit about bringing Quartz back out, because she is definitely a strong option, as she doesn't have defense to be reduced, anyway. Um, Matoya Maru is also a, th a thought, but I don't know if she would necessarily be great because she can't block as many units and I don't know if she can really kill all that much faster. But yeah, it's a little bit hard to say. Matoya Maru is also a choice because I'm thinking of her, you know, second skill which reduces her defense to zero anyway. So, again, if you're going to trade all of your defense, it might as well be against an enemy that reduces your defense anyway. Anyway, so, Cement is pretty cool. And I think we want to make Cement be even cooler. Whoop, no, there we go. No problem. I feel, like she, I feel like she used to spell, or I feel like her dialogue used to spell Docky differently. 
I thought it was spelled with a C-K-Y before, as opposed to a K-I. But I guess I wasn't paying that much attention. Anyway, so, one mistake that I've realized I've been making is that when using Cement, I've sort of been positioning her too early, been using her to lock fanatics. I never, I didn't really mean to, I just tended to put her at the front of my defenses anyway, and so she ended up, you know, blocking the, the fanatics. Uh, this is a bad idea, for the reasons we've already discussed. So, yeah, Cement's main benefit to us is the fact that she has defense. That is why we use defenders, because they have defense. So, letting her defense simply just be whittled away to nothing is bad, and I don't want to do that. Even more so, I don't want to have to redeploy her to clear it. But yes, anyway. So, structural support is the skill that I wanted. I suppose we don't need that as the default, but it's the one that I want for just right now, in general. Work, work. Hop to it now. But yes. So, the plan here is to use Cement as sort of my go-to for dealing with the big ugly thing. So, we're probably going to deploy Cement relatively late into the mission, and we're kind of going to have to play it by ear. Because I'm still not 100% sure what precisely I want to do to solve the issue of the big ugly thing. But yes. It's a little bit hard to say. It's a little bit hard to say what would be ideal. But yes, Estelle, I think we're going to swap out for Quartz for the aforementioned reasons. But yes, Quartz, I'm realizing I'm forgetting to put up the, the movie. We're not in too much danger here. The guards are pretty safe, but... So yes, so with Quartz, Quartz does attack, I think, roughly... Half as fast as Estelle. But yeah, and she doesn't have quite as, like, double attack to make up for it, but she also, uh, we also haven't leveled her up so far, so we should fix that. I'm not going to level her up to 60, I don't think, because I'm a fool who is far too prideful, but, you know. I wish our squad could have fought like this back there. But yes, and we're going to level up her skills somewhat. But yes, so Quartz should be okay. She should do, she should be competitive with Estelle at this point. Maybe not better, but between the lack of needing to care about defense and the, uh, she doesn't have quite as much of an in attack increase. I think I would like to remedy that. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Might as well, just to even the playing field a little bit. Again, I've... Well, she's still much lower level, so... I don't know. I keep wanting to say that I... Or I keep saying that I want to give Quartz a fair shake, that I believe in her. And then I'm just not really giving her the chance to do well. But yeah, anyway, so, like I was saying, Quartz not needing to care about defense is probably pretty okay uh, at dealing with the fanatics. We'll need to be a little bit careful with her, but we should be able to handle a lot of problems. But yes, Kayabe, I think, is going to be our main way of dealing damage to the big ugly thing, given that she has pretty good attack speed, she has the ability to prioritize it with really hot knives, and she can deal damage to it based on its defense. That's it. But yes. So I think really hot knives and her sort of, uh, yeah, Thresher. The combination of really hot knives and Thresher will be quite good for dealing damage to it pretty well. We saw it take a lot of damage, or, well, an appreciable amount of damage from Kaobe previously. But yeah, the trick of this all is we need to deploy our units in such a way that we can deploy Cement that she can get covered by two healers, Gaviel and Perfumer in this case. And we need to we need her to be able to withstand attacks from the big ugly thing for an extended period of time. 
this is not going to be easy, but it should be possible. And that's really what we're... Pardon. It's not going to be easy, but it should be possible, and that's what we're banking on. So yes, with the... Yeah, with her structural support, that should be pretty okay. Should be pretty okay. So yeah, especially since the big ugly thing attacks infrequently, um, has very slow attack interval, and it does a lot of damage, but we should be able to, you know, get through that okay. Whoops. But yes, what I wanted to do was upgrade her skills, because I realized I haven't done that yet. So yes. So, 15 stacks, 13 defense, 13% 13 increased defense per stack. So that should leave her in a good position where we can sort of wait for the medics to... Yeah. We should be able to cover the periods of time where her defense is down somewhat by giving the... or by using uh, skills on the medics and whatnot. So yeah, I think Vitality Restoration is probably better on Gabiel, and I think we're going to increase her skills because I realize she's got very low skills as well. But yes. So Gabiel's been buffed a little bit. Anyone else need a buff? Hmm. Itage also hasn't been, uh... Man, we've been relying on a lot of operators with a lot of not-so-great skills, huh? But yes. I don't know... I don't know. I don't think that the changes we've made to Itage are going to be what, uh decides the battle, necessarily. Um, anyway. Jessica, I think, is still going to be our... pretty... a pretty big part of our strategy. I don't know that I want to make her sort of, like, the strategy, as we sort of have before. And so, yeah, one thing I need to keep in mind. So, currently, the plan is I want to chop down both of these mushrooms and deploy Jessica like so, and I think I'm going to deploy Gaviel like so, covering these tiles. Because, yeah, again, I want Jessica to be dealing damage over the longest sight line that she can. And this is the best way to get that to happen, I think, while still having a good amount of coverage. But, yeah, I think probably we're going to have Kea Bay up here somewhere. We're going to put Cement there eventually. But, yes, and Perfumer here. Because, yeah, the important thing, I think, is that Gaviel and Perfumer have an overlap in their healing area so that they can keep up the healing on uh, Cement while she allows for Keabe to deal some damage. But yes. So, beyond that, I think it's good to have Earth Spirit around still. We might actually want to invest in another unit who can... Uh, delay enemies somewhat. I was thinking about potentially using F-Eater uh, in place of Utage. I guess I wasn't thinking about using her in place of anyone in specific, but having realized that push stroker specialists have a... yeah, have, you know, stats that are not awful, like pretty decent compared to guards, um, as opposed to what I had been assuming, that they would have much worse stats. Yeah, given that, I was thinking of F-Eater largely because F-Eater is also... I think we should be fine on Specialist. But yes, F-Eater also has a dodge, which would be especially good for dealing with the Fanatics, and I think she would also be pretty good for dealing with the uh, Braves, because the Braves can be pushed back a little bit, allowing other units to deal some damage to them for a time, I'm not 100% sold on F-Eater, but I do think she's a good choice. All right, it's showtime. So yes, Tomimi, I'm still trying to work out what her use case should be. I'm not 100% sure she has one on this map, specifically. Um, she could deal some damage to the Big Ugly. She'd probably deal a lot of damage to the Big Ugly. Um... But I'm still not quite sure how to use her. 
And I suppose the only way I can learn is by doing, but... Anyway, Earth Spirit is good. I think we're going to put her roughly where we put her previously. Um, F Eater is good. Uh, she is going to help deal with the Fanatics, I think, and deal with the uh, Braves somewhat. The yeah, Quartz is also kind of there for the same reason. We will see how that works out, I suppose. We might want to do sort of a multi-layered, multi-faceted strategy. Croissant will be good for if we really just need to have sort of a, yeah, a uh, buffer, someone to prevent enemies from leaking past us. But I think we're probably not going to fill up our deployment limit entirely, at least not initially. And we might see how well we can do with just one or two medics for a while until we really have need of another one. But yeah, just so that I can, yeah, be a little bit more efficient with my forces. And I suppose we might as well get started on the mission, huh? Stay focused. Look straight ahead. But yes. So, we're reverting somewhat <clears throat> back to the strategy that we sort of began with. But yeah. Again, I sort of uh, developed a probably, Ooh, like, probably irrational uh, a Not a big avoidance for, uh, yeah, a, a somewhat irrational desire to avoid uh, kill box strategies after I came to the conclusion that they were not uh, universally Ooh, applicable. Ooh, but, you know, not now. universally applicable doesn't mean not useful. So, right. but yes, Quartz is doing okay. Quartz is doing just fine. And so I think we want to deploy Earth Spirit sooner rather than later. Ideally, we probably should have deployed her even sooner than this, really, as soon as we could have, uh, could have, I think. I'm ready. Yes, Quartz doesn't really need a whole lot of support. But she is going to get it. Mm. She might need a little bit more support than I was thinking, actually. But yeah. Um, things are a little bit sketchier than I than I was uh, hoping for. But actually, Vertle is going to get healing wings pretty soon here, and Quartz isn't going to need to deal with enemies for quite as long. So yes, healing wings. But yes, I suppose uh, now's the time we should probably start using Kaobe as uh, I had anticipated, or as I had decided upon. I might actually... Hmm. A thought I just had is we might actually want to use uh, Tomimi up here for a little bit more damage. That's a thought. Um, ah, right. Utage. So yes, we did. Mm, okay, I'm not liking this. Especially not since we don't have passive healing to get some of Utage's health back. Mm. Yeah, I'm not liking Utage's situation here. Um, she'll probably survive, at least this brave. Um, yes, okay. So, she's probably not going to survive the big ugly thing shooting at her, but maybe she will. Yes, very good. Utage is in a situation, and I don't really like the situation that she's in, so I'm going to take her out of that situation. Yes, fortunately, they are not going to target our temporary employees, so that's not an issue. So Mimi continues to be doing her thing. But yes, so I do believe it does seem as though... Actually, hold on. How was I going to deploy Gaviel? I think like this. Okay. Mm, I don't think I want to use... Aobe's skill just yet. Hmm. 
I guess, yeah, I've not paid too much attention to the big ugly things attack patterns. So I'm not 100% sure how we're going to do this all. Um, Myrtle could do some healing. Hmm. Hmm, okay, actually, we've, uh, I've made a strategic blunder, because now we've only got space for one medic. It may be fine with you, but it's not fine with me, so I need to... Hmm. Okay, yeah, I think we've lost, uh, Cement. Oh, dear. Um, hmm. So... Oh dear, we lost both our, our caster and our, uh, yeah, our caster and our slower there. That's unfortunate. Um, but yes, Myrtle is probably redundant at this point. Um, I was kind of expecting the, uh, <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I was kind of expecting the range enemies would stop before this. Um, yeah, I realize now that we've basically accomplished nothing by placing Gaviel where she is, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but what can you do? Um, hmm. What What can you do? Oh dear, we can do more than this, I'm sure. Hmm. So yeah, we have put ourselves into a situation. So let's have, uh, hmm, okay, okay, okay. Oh dear, F Eater has gone down, that's no good. But yeah, um, hmm. Cement. Could we, no, I don't think we can justify using cement. Um, but yes, at least not where, uh, not where the, uh, oh dear. I was thinking that the Brave would go the other way, or I was hoping for, maybe it would be more accurate to say. Oh dear. But yeah, so it doesn't seem like, and I did, I did actually check into this on the wiki. Um, it doesn't seem like, from my observations at the very least, that the big ugly thing is like, inclined to destroy tiles that a unit is deployed upon. Maybe because it prioritizes attacking attacking units over destroying tiles. But, yeah, I don't know. Because it did say that it can destroy uh, stumps and whatnot that your operators are deployed upon. But again, that's not behavior that we've seen out of it. But yeah, I don't have any confidence that we can actually defeat the big ugly thing, necessarily, but I'm definitely willing to give it a try. Perfect timing. And if we hold this position a little bit longer, I guess, yeah, if we hold this position a little bit longer, uh, nothing really great comes of it. I had forgotten that uh, Perfumer wasn't angled to defend quite that high up. Okay, so, I don't think we've got enough defense on our dear old croissant to really make this uh, work very well. But actually, we're wrong. Never mind. Um, yeah, croissant's doing just fine. But yeah, even with just the one medic. So yeah, again, the way we deployed cement was just kind of not great. I don't know that... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know that she's going to last for much longer past this, but I guess we can get rid of Jessica. She's not contributing very much to this. Um, oh, dear. So, I don't know that we can stop the High Priest at this point, but I'm pretty confident we can't stop the High Priest at this point. So, we can at least try to slow him. Maybe. Hmm. Okay.
So not only did we not stop the high priest, we didn't even get a particular we didn't even get a partial victory. Just leave it to me to take care of the reinforcement. Cheer up, Doki. I will. Thank you. I will leave it to you. Okay, so let me refresh myself. So this okay no. So it is auto recovery. So I don't know why Cement never got it. I guess we didn't really have her on the field for very long for the most part. But I was thinking we'd have it, like, at least once. But yes, anyway, we did deploy Cement in such a place and at such a time where she could get shredded a little bit. But that's unfortunate, and we would like to avoid that in the future. So yeah. Oh, right, I realize. I realize duelists only get their SP when they're blocking enemies. So that's part of the issue, I suppose. Hmm. So that complicates things a little bit, but I do think this is still pretty doable. Quartz did her job admirably. If we had Gaviel supporting, uh, if we had Gaviel supporting Cement, we definitely could have stopped the High Priest sooner. But yes, Kaobe might not have actually been the best option for that particular, the particular place she was in. Yeah, it might have actually been more to our benefit to deploy Earth Spirit, if for no other reason than to get some slows on the High Priest. Sick. But yeah, given the situation with Cement, it might not actually be... She might not be able to contribute in quite the way that I was hoping for. She does still have a, a much higher base defense, but there comes a time when we have to come face to face with the fact that we probably don't want to leave the High Priest or leave the big ugly thing blocked for 30 minutes or for 30 minutes or a minute. Yeah, if this mission goes for 30 minutes then I would be concerned. That being said, we could also look at this from the other direction. And rather than saving Cement for very late into the mission, we could try to deploy Cement as early as we can and rely on her to tank the Impalers and the, uh, yeah, tank the Impalers and the Shamans, which might actually be a pretty good idea. I like that idea, actually, now that I think about it some more. So Cement might take the place of Jessica in a, in a sense, a weird sort of way. We might want to deploy Jessica first, just to have a little bit more reliability. But I do think Cement early could have some merit. And certainly we want we will want to have Cement be fairly un... Uh, we'll want her to be able to block enemies for a while, so we won't want to have more... Yeah, we won't want to have more backup on her than is strictly necessary. But yeah, as long as we can have structural re structural support ready by the time the big ugly comes trundling through, it should be okay. Honestly, again, with how well Croissant held up with just one medic, we might we might not need it to be honest. Structural support might just be uh, redundant. <clears throat> but yes, so. Once the High Priest does start rolling through, it will become an issue, though. Hmm. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I guess part of it is, yeah, we do. Prasant does have a skill. Does have a skill that gives her a chance to ignore attack. So that was probably part of why she was surprisingly survivable there. But yeah, I think otherwise we're basically good to continue. Good to try again. I'm here to help. But yeah, having another way to slow the High Priest once it becomes the High Priest is definitely good. 
But again, it could be just as valuable. It could be just as valuable. I guess I maybe shouldn't have done that. Well, it's fine. We've shown that Quartz can manage all this on her own, basically. Yes, with just a little bit of support from Myrtle. There's now a moth in my room. Yes, hopefully this moth will decide to provide us with a little bit of wisdom, because I feel like I could use some right about now. Yes, just one or two more chops before, yeah, Jessica is ready to go. There are probably better medics for this, or snipers for this specific purpose than Jessica specifically. And I guess, given uh, how close we were to the are to deploying cement, even after that, we probably should have waited. <laughs> we probably should have just waited to deploy cement. Um, where do we want to place cement? Here is probably... no. No, yeah, because the more I think about it, the more I th well, the more I think about it, the more I want to deploy Gaviel early, actually, but beyond that... Um... Okay, because yes, my thought is basically we want to deploy cement as aggressively as we can get away with because... Deploying her aggressively, yeah, deploying her aggressively will allow us to, uh, ah, extra damage. But yes, deploying her aggressively will allow us to put as much space between the, uh, big ugly thing and the rest of us as possible. Yeah. Ideally, what would really be really good... Yes, the very, very best thing we could get out of or, yeah, out of cement is if she could realistically stop the big ugly thing like right here before it finishes its first loop. But yes, be afraid. this should all be just fine. Yeah, again, using Utage as sort of a budget. Uh, Rapid redeploy operator. I guess not a budget because she's more expensive than them. Um, using her as something akin to a rapid redeploy operator is probably not ideal. But, you know. We've got the tools that are available to us. Ah, I see my foolishness now. I've deployed Keobe in such a way, or I've deployed Cement in such a way that Keobe cannot support her. Um, so, okay. Yeah, Utage got bodied like I expected, but she got bodied a little bit faster than I was expecting. But yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are supporting Gaviel as well. Okay, okay. So, Cement is not blocking anything, which is a bit of an issue. But, it's not that much of an issue, necessarily. Yes, Quartz is still doing her job. Myrtle is doing her job. Um, we've got another Brave coming up, which I'm not thrilled about. But, I can live with it. But yes. I've been reluctant, historically, to... Ah, I put the wrong skill on Gabiel now that I, now that I think about it. Oh dear. But yeah, I've been reluctant historically to use uh what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, use automatic skills before like they they're in a situation, the operators are in a situation where they would be like relevant. But you know, needs must. And I think it's more optimal to lose a little bit of time but still be you know using the skill then uh not use the skill and lose some time okay so we've just lost gaviel i wasn't paying attention to see if she had taken any damage so it's hard for me to say whether we lost her because it simply overrode her yeah ooh, this is bad yeah, Cement did not last quite long enough there, unfortunately. Um, 
what could we have done better there for Cement? Um, this was probably a bad move because Myrtle is probably going to be troubled somewhat. I only want to strike the enemy. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, again, I did not see whether Jessica. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got a little bit foolish there. Um. Actually, why did hmm? Why did Quartz suddenly die there? That seems unusual. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Is there anything we can really do about this, or are we kind of in a bad spot? Um. Okay, we're not totally. We're not in a totally untenable situation. We're in a bad situation, certainly, but it's one that's salvageable, I think. Mm, that was maybe the wrong choice to make, but. Maybe not, actually, because we can now kind of put things in, like, a good enough way. Not a good way, necessarily, but we can put things in a good enough way, I think. Because, yes, we can get some healing from Gaviel, and we can get some healing from Perfumer. We're going to still put a little bit more damage on the big ugly thing as it rounds this corner. Gonna give Utage a little bit more time in the sun. I should probably get some more deployment points. Anything we can do to delay this thing a little bit is probably for the best. And damaging it is even better than delaying it. Yes, I meant to switch Gaviel over to her other skill, but it's fine, I think, this one. Um, yes, Quartz can absolutely not, uh, absolutely not endure, uh, what she will have to endure, uh, if we were to put her there, but between her ability to, uh, yeah, between Miracle Field and, oh dear, well, I was going to say in between Miracle Field and uh, Kung Fu. She might be surprisingly resilient, but uh, she might also not be, actually. Hey, Obey. Please di display to us your incredible killing power. So, is there anything else I can do to... Yeah, I can... Get a little bit more damage if I deploy Jessica. But yes. I suppose we should probably put the... Yeah. Get a little bit more healing out of Gaviel. Because yes. It does seem like we might be able to... Get a little bit more out of this. I don't know if the... I don't think the big ugly thing is going to make another stop. So we need to make all of this count. Uh, no, I don't need to have her take a nap. That will be counterproductive. Oh, we did actually lose a croissant there, which I wasn't expecting. Okay. So. Okay, so. If you could, Quartz, thank you. Okay. So it's untargetable for a little bit. Hmm. So yeah, not um, nothing we can do here, unfortunately. We could maybe, s yeah, if I deployed Earth Spirit a little bit longer, I could have slowed it, but I wouldn't have been able to stop it. Don't be glum, chump. Follow-up work is part of construction too. Sit. Just leave it to me to take care of the reinforcement. So yes. Up, so, as we saw there. Miracle Field is pretty good, actually. And if we switch back to Croissant's other skill, probably that would be best. So yes, between that she can between that and Miracle Field, she can probably stand up to the thing, the ugly thing even, for a good while, to be honest. And whoops. 
we will improve her skills as well. Yes, I guess we don't have much control over that, but we did have the big ugly thing attacking her for a good while. F Eater was basically a joke before the might of the big ugly thing, so we probably don't even need to consider that anymore. Um, other slowing options. Manticore is another choice that we could make. Manticore might actually be pretty good, honestly. Because, yeah, with her pretty high dodge, it's like a 50% dodge, I think, she can avoid the worst of the big ugly thing. And with the inability to be targeted in melee, she can, yeah, avoid even more of it. So, yes. So... Again, having as few units as I can, as I can get away with, the, uh, in the area where the big ugly thing is, could be good. Because, yeah, once it explodes, it will be an issue. Keobe, yeah, it was roughly here when it exploded, and Keobe was unaffected, I think. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I'm not 100% sure about that. But, yeah, um... Other things we could have improved upon. Not a whole lot. I think we just need to make things a little bit cleaner. Yeah. Um, having Cement as the sort of front defender and then having... Uh, then having uh, Croissant behind her could be good. Because, yeah, Croissant's 5% uh, chance to negate an attack is okay. It's not as good as 10%, but it's better than 0%, which was what Cement has on her own. Um, yeah, the explosion is just a big issue, so we need to, like, stop the thing as soon as we can. Sit. <laughs> But yes, Quartz is basically self-sufficient, and we don't need to worry about her too much. Um, well, self-sufficient is maybe a strong term for it, but she doesn't need too much more support than Myrtle. Myrtle stayed around a little bit longer than I was kind of planning on, but she did fine, so I'm not going to complain. Earth Spirit might not be the best choice, honestly. At least not for what we're specifically going for, but she's probably not terrible either. I think I've messed up my deployment order a little bit because I think, yeah, Quartz was supposed to be on the field before all of this. A little bit late, but not a big problem, exactly. Yeah, Earth Spirit can kill a few enemies on her own, but she's not that deadly. But yes, we are going to, yeah, have basically as much uptime on Jessica as we would have otherwise. Um, a little bit more damage out of Earth Spirit could be good. But yeah, the Braves aren't as big of an issue as, as I had thought. I don't necessarily need to put that much effort into destroying them. Maybe a little bit more, but not that much. But yes. Um, well, what were we going to use Gaviel? This way or that way? I think either could work, and I've forgotten to switch her back to her other skill, her first skill. Um, yeah, one way or another, as long as we have these inner tiles covered, we should be okay. Hmm. Yeah, either way, we probably don't need her immediately. We could probably use Perfumer sooner. Yes, especially because Utage's best friends are about to show up, and we need to give them a warm welcome. But yes, part of me almost wants to, uh... Part of me almost wants to double up on our ranged units here, so that we can get a little bit more damage. Let's see us. Cement, as long as we place Cement, like, 
behind where Tomimi is. That should be pretty fine. Ah, I forgot we've had a healing wings in the wings for a while now. Yeah, again, part of my issue is just that I get really focused on a lot of details that are probably not as important. A lot of micro-optimizations. I want to only use the skills at the most optimal time, rather than just, you know, whenever they're applicable. But that's probably not for the best. So yes, we probably, again, should have been a bit more mindful of uh, how we deployed or how we retreated uh, Utage, but I'm not that concerned about it. Um, I don't want to use Tamimi's skill just yet. The yes, Escort should do okay. Myrtle should do okay as well. The big ugly thing is coming, and that's kind of troubling, but, you know, it's not that bad. We should be able to work around it. And we might, again, we might be able to get utility out of Tomimi's stun, finally. At the very least, we can get damage out of her attacks, so... Yes, we can deploy Gaviel in such a way that she can heal Cement, which is nice. But I think probably the best thing that we're getting out of this right now is the fact that we get uh, a little bit more... Yeah, we get a little bit more uh, damage. Oh dear. Well, hmm. Ah, oh, Utake, another of your friends has shown up. But yes, we get a little bit more damage out of... Uh... What was I saying? I was saying something. Sorry, I got uh, a little bit caught up in the stress of battle. But yeah, we get a little bit more healing out of Gaviel's skill. But yeah, we're going to have some enemies getting past Cement, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, we can probably... I'm worried about removing Myrtle, considering what we had last time, but... Um, I think we need to, because we don't want... We don't want this much heat on Cement now that I think about it. Yeah, so having another target for... Ah, there we go. Yeah, another target for the ranged enemies is good. We can probably remove Utage at this point, so we might as well do that. Yes, yeah, Quartz is going to be able to deal with these fellows admirably. Okay, Jessica was definitely not at, like... A particularly low health threshold there. So I think she just got eliminated. Yeah, she just basically just got eliminated because she happened to be standing on a tile that was cold. So, we're doing pretty good, I'd say. But yes, we've got this uh, shaman fellow going through our defenses, which is kind of troubling, but we should be able to deal with him just fine. But yes, hey, obey, if you would be so kind. But yeah, that guy is attacking, uh, yeah, attacking, uh, Croissant, but Croissant's pretty tough and can handle it. Hmm. She is going to get stunned when, uh, the guy explodes, which is kind of an issue, but, you know, it's not that big of an issue, in theory. Um... Yes, I think we're probably pretty okay now. A little bit more damage on the High Priest is always good, but the real big thing that we have here is the stun. And I suppose if we'd been a little bit more forward-thinking, we could have cleared some of these mushroom tiles to give uh, Jessica more room to shoot, for instance, but... Um... I think we've won, actually. Yeah, we've won. We've definitely won. So, yeah, this is redundant. Oh boy. <laughs> nice. Okay, stopping it early was definitely the play. Sip.
All right. Thank you for accompanying me for that. That was quite intense. <coughs> well, uh, hold on. I should do a different battle cry next time. I'm getting rather tired of this one. Hey, is he all right? No need to worry. He'll be back in a minute. Okay, is he like a person? I've never heard of anyone like him before. No idea. The High Priest only told me he's lived here for a very long time. Alright then, uh, what else can we say? <laughs> he's really something. Gavial, your head is bleeding. Are you okay? It's fine, just a scratch. Tamimi, bring me my medical bag here. Hmm? Where did Tamimi go? Here's your bag, and Tamimi, I think I saw her running off somewhere right before we won the fight. Thanks. She didn't get scared, did she? Anyway, let's patch ourselves up first. You go check if anyone's injured and bring them to me if they are. I'll take care of them. Leave it to me. Haha, <laughs> no problem. Uh, what a pain. Fine. But your belly aching. Doctor? Hmm. The big ugly. Uh, sorry, Zumama, we had to take it apart. I know. I checked your engine. I think it's working fine. You can have it back. Oh yeah? That's great. You really won't stay, Gaviel? Yeah, just like you, I've found my calling. To be a doctor? That's it. Is doctoring fun? Is building machines fun? It is. Same here. But you still have to be the great chief. Huh? Anyway, you slice it. You beat the big ugly thing. You won, Gaviel. Look, everyone's here again. They're looking to you. <laughs> Doctor, what do we do? Ah! Uh, your call. You're not giving me anything here. Gaviel, are you hurt? Mm, I'm fine. Where did you run off to? Huh? Oh, that. I had to go pee. Okay. Hmm. Uh, what's wrong, Gaviel? Why are you looking at me like that? Hmm. Haha. <laughs> I've got it. Everyone, listen up. I beat the big ugly, so I'm going to be the great chief. And so, my message to you is... Your fists are everything. Eh? Gaviel? Are you... Staying here to be the great chief? But, I have something very important I must do, so I have to leave. Worry not, though. When I'm gone, Tamimi will give my will give orders on my behalf. Just treat Tamimi as you would treat me. Uh, what? Is that really gonna fly? Don't these people worship strength over everything? Gaviel is the great chief, after all. She defeated everyone, so her word is law. <laughs> Your mama, machines are pretty cool, but I think I'll stick with my fists after all. Hmm. Don't forget, I still don't recognize you. I'll build an even greater machine and challenge you again. Sure, I'll be waiting. Oh, right, before that, you need to come with me for a bit. Why? You need to come with me to Rhodes Island to get an oropathy checkup. And I refuse? I still have to work on the big ugly. You don't have a choice this time. Besides, until Tamimi takes over, I'm still the great chief. I'll bring you back even if I have to kidnap you. <sighs> Fine. Gaviel, are you going to leave after all? Yep, I'll probably be leaving right as soon as we get the engine back in the aircraft. No. I won't, I won't let you leave. All enemies have been dealt with. Troubling. But yeah, that was quite the clear there. <laughs> All right. It's not over yet. Out of the jungle, a new life awaits them. I'm kind of worried about this, but... Uh, I guess we'll see how this shakes out. So... Ba -ba -ba -bum, the movie. I think I'm going to switch back to Estelle because I think she's generally 
more widely applicable. We're going to switch back to Gaviel's automatic skill because I'm not good at timing manual skills. Cement, 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 cement. Um, I don't know if I have a really a better unit than cement right now. Probably I do. Probably, well, I don't know. I assume we're probably not going to fight the big ugly thing again. Hmm. We do have Tomimi on our team. It feels a little bit weird to have Tomimi on our team, considering that we're presumably now in conflict with her. Maybe we'll fight Tomimi with Tomimi. That could be fun. But yes. Um, I guess there's not a whole lot more substitutions I can make, you know, without seeing the mission itself, so... Tip. Mimi, are you okay? I won't let you leave. Huh? Why? Because I don't want to be without you again. Huh? I wanted to become Great Chief so I could force you to stay. Does that mean you're the one who organized the ceremony this time? Yes, if you didn't show up in the middle of it, I'd have become the Great Chief. I see. Huh? What are you guys talking about? It was very odd to have the ceremony at all. Hmm? What are you talking about, Doctor? That's what... Uh, what's that about the ceremony? You're pretty smart, Outsider. Just think about it for a minute, Gaviel. Ever since you left, most of the tribes dissolved into the many smaller tribes we know today. Without a central leader, the tribes couldn't come together to do anything at all. So, how could we suddenly put on a ceremony? There had to be someone organizing things behind the scenes. Hmm? Wasn't it you who organized the ceremony? It wasn't me. The Big Ugly still needed an engine. It wasn't done. I was planning to wait another year before contacting the other tribes to hold the ceremony, but then all of a sudden it was happening. It was unexpected, but I didn't mind. I thought that even an incomplete Big Ugly could have shocked the world. The unexpected part was you coming back. Now that you mention it, Tamimi was the one who asked me to return. So you really did orchestrate everything? Yes. I've been studying for years to learn what I would need to convince the other tribes to make me the Great Chief. But it's not too late. The tribes under my command are waiting out there, and the Big Ugly has been defeated. No one can stop me from making Gabriel stay. Why do you want me here so, bad so badly? Be because... Where am I? Uh, uh, I want to go home. Uh -huh. Hey, Tamimi, are you okay? Gaviel. You're such a pain. I let you out of my sight for one second and you run off into a place like this. Gaviel, you're bleeding. Huh? Well, it's fine. It's just a little cut. Come on, let's go home. Gaviel saved my life. I love her more than anyone. Uh, uh, and Gaviel is the strongest. As long as Gaviel is our great chief, she can lead everyone. Yeah, I was thinking you're all grown up now, but you haven't changed a bit. I've got important work to do, Tamimi. You can't stop me. The, the book said, if I can't capture his heart, then I'll keep him close to me. The books also said, as long as he is by my side, it doesn't matter if he hates me. So... Even if you hate me, Gaviel, I still want you here. I think you might want to reconsider your choice of romantic literature there, Tomimi, but, um... Anyway. <sighs> She's been slurping down trashy romance novels with a straw. Now the big ugly is down and you're exhausted. You can't beat me. If you surrender, uh, I won't hurt you. You can't keep me here, Tomimi. But that's not up to you. Everyone, attack! Alright. So, what forces? I, I haven't lost yet. Everyone, attack! Oh yes, we do have uh, significant numbers here. And we've got a pretty good amount of units to start off with. I kind of wish we had ports still, now that, I, now that I'm looking at this. Oh, well. Hmm. Right. 
So, we will do what we can with what we've got. And we'll just sort of see how that uh, treats us. There's nothing you can do but your best. Man, these people are so pumped to fight. Gavil, yeah, you should just call it quits and stick around. Alright, I want deployment points. Hmm. Alright, we need more damage. I don't know why I've been waiting. Um, It feels weird to have Tamimi out, but, you know, whatever. Maybe we'll put Gaviel next to her so it feels a little bit less incongruous. Hmm. I might have put Jessica into Impaler range, but uh, we should be okay. So strong. But this is all for Gaviel. Everyone, keep going. Alright, and now... Aobe. Who did very good. I'm very happy with Kaobe's performance. Yeah, she wasn't the, like, absolute linchpin of our strategy that I sort of expected, but she did very good. But yeah, she certainly showed her, her capability. But yes, more deployment points have never hurt anyone, so I will gladly accept them. Gotta tell you, it feels a darn sight weird, like we're the bad guys all trying to make off with Gaviel. <laughs> it's kind of shady to say, but don't you think there's something about her that makes you want to steal something away from her? Yep, you saying that just makes the badness all that much better. Utage is quite the individual. If you want treatment, you gotta come closer. Okay, now we've got, uh, yeah, now we've got some fanatics coming our way, so that's going to be a little bit of an issue. I am very much thinking that it would be nice if we had forts, but... You've got healing, so that should count for something. Yes, if we apply enough violence, uh, broadly enough and quickly enough, we should be okay. Uh, they're not bad people, Doctor. I don't want to hurt them. Perhaps not, but... If we don't hurt enough of them, we will lose the mission, and that's no good. Alright, okay, I bet if you would be so kind as to clear a way for us. Maybe we should have placed her facing upwards to cover a little bit more ground, but oh well. And there's nothing we can really do with... Oh no, we can actually... We can get a little bit more damage with Earth Spirit. Yeah, a little bit more damage and some slowing is always nice. Yes. F Eater is probably going to have zero defense before too long here, but you know, it's okay. Yes, we're doing pretty good. This does feel a little bit more like a, a victory lap, honestly. Not a tremendously difficult level. But it is definitely a very different strategy than what we've been seeing. And it is the return of the legendary kill box. Oh dear. Yeah, I did deploy Earth Spirit there without much consideration for what the situation might turn into. Granted, I guess I really couldn't have anticipated, uh... Yeah, you know, I can't anticipate what's going to happen. Alright, some healing. Just stop it, Tamimi. Yeah, no defense on F Eater. Fortunately, Estelle does seem to be dealing with the, uh, does seem to be dealing with the fanatics faster than they are dealing with her, but we are still a little bit troubled. Um, Utage needs to take a nap. But yes, they don't call her a freak with a sword for nothing. Yes, I don't think Utage is going to stand up to much additional violence. Hang in there, I'm coming. But, mm, I don't I don't know if there's a bug to that. I think we're just kind of uh, 
in a bad situation, honestly. Um, you can take a nap. Hmm. Alright, just go. Hmm. And we... I don't know if I want to use Myrtle skill right away, because I think she might... We don't need the DP, of course, and the healing, or the lack of blocking, might turn out badly for us. Uh, uh. Alright, Death Eater. Block them a little bit more. We're doing very good. Oh yeah, okay, we're good. Actually, we won. I'm confident. Okay. <laughs> Funny how the confidence only really comes once there's no other option than to uh, accept victory. But yeah. Yeah, basically everyone's lost all their defense, but I didn't lose my defense. Sip. The most triumphant sip I've had in a long time. It's over, Tamimi. No, it's it's not. Neural. Hedda. Doctor. Doctor. If you don't want your friends getting hurt, don't make me angry, Tamimi. I won't stop until you promise you'll stay, Caviel. Help me, Doctor. Doctor, I'm scared. Wah. Don't be scared. I'm gonna save you. Doctor. Lance it too. Doctor. Wow, you two are really selling it. What? When, when did you get free? Uh, sorry, somebody needs to learn how to tie a knot. Did you know Tamimi was gonna do this, Doctor? Well, I didn't know, per se, but it is pretty obvious in hindsight, honestly. How, how did you know? Well, first of all, there was the way you hesitated when Zumama came up. Oh, hesitated? And then when you panicked at Gaviel during the ceremony. Uh, finally, uh, Dylan, the thing? Oh, I gave it to Lancet, too. Uh-huh. That was just for you, Doctor. I normally don't normally let people put things inside me so easily. It's a rocket launcher? Yep, found it with Tamimi's tribe. Interesting. Now that means... You got it. The one who shot us down was this little runt right here. Tamimi. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gaviel. Come here. <laughs> You're going over my knee. Gaviel, please don't spank me. I know what I did was bad. Them's the brakes. Now your little whelps get tail spankings. Mm. Tail spanking, huh? Looks ouchy. Are you gonna do it again? I won't do it again. <laughs> Good. <laughs> anyway, I think we're pretty much okay now, Doctor. Surprised you didn't give her the whatever whirlwind thing. I wouldn't want to hurt little Femimi after all. <sighs> I'm a little tired myself. This big guy does look a little ugly at first, but the angular, rugged design, this cluttered but effective wiring, it has a special beauty to it when you look close. Real marriage material, I think. Huh, Lancet it too. Go see if we can still salvage the engine. What? Are you telling me the engine's inside this big guy? There is. And we blew it up. Oh, poor engine. Poor big guy. Mr. Dillon, can you do me a favor? Alright. Uh, hey, Zumama, why are you standing there drooling like that? Gaviel. Huh? What's up? That. That. What? What? That. That moving, talking machine is incredible. Oh, you mean Lancet too? She's a friend of ours. Can Can I talk to her? Knock yourself out. 
Um, hello. Hi. Are you a machine? My product designation is Raytheon Exister S62 Model 6 Wheeled Operation Platform. I belong to Rhodes Island. Codename Lancet 2. Wow. Yes, I do have a certain level of intelligence. As long as your questions aren't too hard, I should be able to answer them. Speaking of which, I am a medical operation platform, so my knowledge base is focused on medicine. Do keep that in mind. <laughs> is something wrong? Can I hug you? What? What is she doing? Did the screw come loose? Isn't it obvious? She's in awe of that machine. Huh? Shocked as she was when she first saw a moving city, a machine that moves and talks on its own is even more striking. And forget her, I'm just as excited. Oh, my beautiful young lady, might I have the honor of taking you on a date? I know the most gorgeous spot in the rainforest. I'll take you there for a lovely afternoon. Uh, oh, you... you're asking me out? I don't know what to do here. I'm flattered. Doctor, should I accept? If you want to. Don't butt in, High Priest, or you can't blame me for what happens to our friendship after all these years. So, Gabriel, your people you're with now can create this type of machine? Huh? The, the pretty sure closure can, yeah. Okay, I made a decision. Does this Rhodes Island place need more hands? I want to join. Huh? I want to go with you to learn about mechanical technology. Huh? I've thought about leaving to go study in the outside world before, but I never seriously considered it because of the tribe. I think this is a great opportunity. Th then I'm going to. What? If, if this is how it's going to be, then it's time for plan B. I'm going with Gaviel. Gaviel, I fight really hard, so I can definitely help you, Gaviel. Uh, Doctor, what should I do here? Well, uh, I guess we've got to contact HR. They can come, but I don't know what might happen. <sighs> yeah, might as well give them the operator test. Whatever, at least stick with the doctor and try to learn something. Right. Hey, Gaviel, do me a favor and tell me what this little squirt is saying. Huh? Amar? I have to go with her. She says she's going with you. Huh, cool. She packs a punch. I bet she'll make a fine operator. She said okay. Good. Hmm, wait a second. So Zamama's going, Mimi's going, Jamara's going. What about the tribes? You weren't that worried about when you weren't worried about that when you left the first time. <laughs> I was seeing red back then. Couldn't think at all. You're right, though. I can't just abandon my tribe. Oh, I think you've got nothing to worry about in that department. It's no caviar, but the uh, the big ugly is still pretty strong. That's for sure. I want to make one, too. With the temple destroyed, let's build machines instead. Whoever makes the most awesome one gets to be the great chief. Hey, no. Fighting is way better. Oh, good point. I don't want to give up fighting. What should we do? Clearly the option is to make machines that fight each other. Alright, morons. Why not just fight and also build machines? Yeah! See? Nothing to worry about at all. From what I've seen, the common folk are usually quite quick to adapt, even as the leaders hem and haw about the future. What if I told you that the first great chief was actually a Takua brave who got himself the title, prior to whom there was no custom to choose a great chief at all? Well, I suppose there has to be someone for the first time. My priest, why did you never tell me that before? Oh, I never thought it was important, is it? My point is that people are resilient. They'll go on living even if one of their traditions disappears. I've always thought of traditions as rituals that bring people together. But when that tradition carries on for a few decades, they start to think it's inviolable, it's unbreakable, it has to go on forever. But that's nonsense. So, you tell me you want to blow up the temple and I'm all in, both hands and both feet, and my tail too. Oh, no, if my hands and feet are in, my tail has to stay out, right? What if I'm laying down? See? Let's see. 
I get it. Just how old are you? How old? I forget. And honestly, these methods you have for keeping track of time mean nothing to me. Whether or not I ha happen to have forgotten when I was born. Okay, but we still need someone to be the Great Chief. Hey, I heard Gavil and Zumama were fighting again. Is it already over? Hmm. Why are you looking at me like that, Gavil? Hey, Enom, are you in interested in being Great Chief at all? What? Alright, we found the new boss. So, after going through all going through all that, you got the engine back, performed your emergency repairs, and got on the road back home? It, yeah. Doctor, I do believe I told you what a precious piece of equipment that aircraft was before you left. Well, I apologize for the lack of foresight in not installing point defense systems on it. There were extenuating circumstances. Seeing as how the aircraft is still in irreparable condition, I won't be too hard on you, but the maintenance costs are coming out of your pay. And Blaze's. Uh, and mine? Yeah, what does she have to do with this? An elite operator takes elite responsibility. <sighs> Fine. As for the three individuals you brought back, since you seem to think they have what it takes to be operators, I'll leave them to the doctor. Gabriel, were you satisfied with your trip back home? Eh, sure. But even I didn't think it'd go down like that. It was fun. Honestly, I had a contingency plan in case the doctor didn't bring you back. Why? Because I figured there was a possibility you'd want to stay there. Huh? Outside, I thought you knew me better than that. You've never really adapted to life outside your tribe. Every day you come into conflict with the world in your own ferocious way. I'll put it this way. If someday you ask for a leave of absence, or if you just left, I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, Doctor, maybe I'm not getting this right. Is Calcite saying she cares about me? Yes. If there's nothing else, Dr. Tiber, you can go. Calcite, I'm not going anywhere. I had a reason to leave my tribe. I really did want to practice medicine. Now, that's not to say I really thought I could become a doctor, but I'm very happy I made that decision. From a modern medical standpoint, we pretty much have no doctors back home. If you get sick, you just let it run your course. Maybe try a few re traditional remedies. If I never left, I wouldn't know what the world is really like. I wouldn't know how many diseases are preventable or curable. I wouldn't know how people look down on neuropathy. I wouldn't even know that saving lives makes me as happy as taking them. The world is definitely complicated, and I don't always know what motivates people or why they fight. But I'm a doctor now, and my dream is to treat Orpathy. Is there a better place in this wide world for me to study and practice medicine? I'm afraid not. Well, how about that? And by the way, you all work, work a lot harder than I do. What's with you here worrying about me? Honestly, I think I should be worrying about you, Calcite. You didn't pick up my slack while I was away now, did you? No. Good. I'm going to give Zoomama an Orpathy checkup. You have a nice chat now. Oh, I'll see what uh, Kemar is up to. But I guess I'm calling her Flint now. I'm worried she'll get into a fight with the language barrier and all. Honestly, if she knew how to speak the language, she probably would get into more fights. Sit. Being able to ask people to fight you is the easiest way to be able to provoke them to fight you, I think. Doctor, Tamimi should be in her general studies class now. You should check on her when you're done. Gavial? Hmm? Welcome back. Haha. <laughs> hey, what about me? You had another mission ready to go last week. You're technically very late. Aww. Rough stuff for Blaze. In your eyes, you just went on a nonsensical journey. But, just like our Gaviel, it was a showcase of the lively and diverse world we inhabit. We lose so much to the endless march of time, that which was once a fact of life in the past is now precious to us. We search for the light that slips through the breaks in the crowd and begin to see that as the norm. 
I hope you and your fellow operators learned a lesson from this trip. Some things are not too far out of reach. Calcite, meeting time. I know. Now then, Dr. Tiber, you have a lot of work waiting for you. I hope you got enough rest on your vacation. We did win. Thank you for your support against yourself, Tamimi. All right. <laughs> so yes. So, as I understand it, that was all of the story content for this. So yes, and these are challenge missions. So yeah, like I said, it's optional and challenge content we're going to leave aside for the time being. So, I think we have, uh, or yeah, there is no better time now than to call it for the night. But yes, wasn't that an exciting adventure? But yes, and a fun conclusion to it as well. Again, sort of a victory lap, I like that. But with persistence and with planning, we were able to triumph over the biggest and ugliest of things. And now it is time for us to wrap up. So, yes, just to reiterate once again, currently I am expecting, blah, 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 there we go. But yes, currently I am expecting to uh, change up the approach that I've been uh, using for, uh, yeah, change up the approach I've been using for the Arc Knight streams. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to focus more on the main story and on Intermezzi events with a little bit of extra yeah, thrown in for flavor and for, uh, yeah, thrown in for flavor and for context as I see fit. Um, let's see. So yes, but once again, side events for Arc Knights going forward will probably be something I pursue on the side and not anything that I intend to invest in heavily. But yes, so... Hmm. But yes, side events, intermezzi, main, main missions. But yeah, again, there's other game modes, integrated strategies, um... Yeah, integrated strategies and files for Navigator are, I think, the ones that have stories to them. I don't know how story-focused they are, but they do have plots, at the very least. They have endings, I know that much. Um, so, that's something. Um, yeah, again, my main focus is... My main focus is, as I stated, and I don't want to get distracted, I want to reiterate this to myself as much as everyone else, my main focus is the main story and intermezzi. So yes, I will do what I can to present those with as much context as I feel is useful to make them uh, more, yeah, as much context as is useful for them. But yeah, so that might include doing some side stories every now and then. Beyond that, um, let's see, are there, yeah, side missions or side stories and vignettes will be secondary, something I do in my free time if I feel like doing a little bit extra. Probably going to be streaming Arc Nights twice a week now, when possible. But yes, and I will try to balance that with my other streams. So, probably not going to go above three streams per week, at least not every week. <clears throat> but, yeah, again, I would like to do two Arc Nights streams a week so we can get this done in a somewhat more reasonable time period. But yes, that being said, um, yeah, that is that. So, for the rest of the week, you should be looking at 9 p.m. or so for the Thursday and Friday streams. Not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing for them right now. Honestly, having just completed an event, I do want to take a little bit of a break, so we might be playing other games. But yes, we might be doing the collab on some of these upcoming days, but again, doing it on Wednesday, or Wednesday? Not Wednesday, it is Wednesday right now, and we're closing stream, so we're not going to do the collab. But yes, doing the collab on Friday, as I understand it, is unlikely, and I don't know, yeah, as of right now, we haven't confirmed whether or not Thursday would be possible either, so it's 
it's impossible that uh, this week might not be a collab week. Yes, one way or another, I'm sure I will have something to do on these next few days, and probably a, some portion of that will be Mika and the Witch's Mountain. But yes, so that should be everything that needs to be said. Now, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a raid target of my own. I mean, to, I usually mean to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Usually mean to do this, uh, before I go into business, such that, uh, we can discuss business, uh, while I am waiting. But, such is life. <laughs> but yes, so, not seeing any suggestions tonight, so I do believe tonight we are going to go and visit It's Just a Goblin, yes, whom we've seen a little bit of, but currently playing some Dark Souls Remastered. But yes, I don't have a Dark Souls Remastered, but I do have Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, and I have beaten it. One of perhaps a uh, few, well, not perhaps, one of few games that I have beaten uh, recently. One of few games that I've beaten in general. Yeah. Anyway, so it's just a goblin. The customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. It looks like they are in, yeah, the Tomb of the Giants, I believe. Anyway, I guess that doesn't matter too much. Anyway, I'm saying anyway a lot. We have arrived. So, all of that is to say, anyway. <laughs> I cracked myself up. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. Seems that I forgot to stop the stream for even longer this time.